Yeah. yeah so I've about that too. Okay, so I guess basically anything in the Bible that's considered wickedness, those are the people who would appear upside down. Then, hey, hey, hey patience. Uh huh. There, there's another scripture. I don't know if it's pertaining to that, but it's out of Isaiah uh, chapter twenty-four, verse one, and mm -hmm. it reads, "Behold, the law appeared, and he turned and scattered in heaven and slew off." You're breaking up a little bit. Um, what no, was the I'm, scripture here? I, Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Isaiah 24, 1. Read it again, slowly. It, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, I think that's more talking about the earth. <laughs> I have a question. So if you borrow money from someone and you tell them you're going to pay them back and when you go to pay them back, they say, never, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. What then? Then you're good. I mean, they're forgiven the debt. That's Jubilee. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. What if, yeah. what if someone borrows money from you? And you mm -hmm. don't expect to, them to pay you back and it does like, you don't, it doesn't bother, like someone borrowed money from me, they say, oh, I'll pay you back tomorrow, and they don't. But mm -hmm. that doesn't bother me, I didn't expect them to. Does that, is that okay, because I'm okay with it? No, not if they promised to pay it back, and they didn't keep their word, then no. <laughs> it's just because you're okay with it, it's not, that's not fine. Now, unless you have a conversation with them and say, you know, I forgive the debt, and you don't have to pay me back. And you've so terrified that. If you haven't terrified that, then it. no. They, no, no. That's not how it works. <laughs> if no. you guys had a verbal contract where they said we're going to pay you back and don't pay you back, then don't be in that category. Now, of course, there's other things that can happen. For example, let's say you take out a loan for a business and let's say the business doesn't go well or something. Um, and now you can't afford to pay that back. It's as long as you're working towards it and the Lord knows, hey, I'm working towards repaying this debt you're good you see what i'm saying but if you like again it all goes down boils down to the heart to the heart issue right because god knows your heart so but if you go borrow money and say well i'm gonna pay it back knowing hey i have no intention of paying this back clearly that that would be considered you know like wickedness so i just want to clarify that does that make sense yeah, I just didn't. I just don't want to bring it up to the person, as I'm fine with it. Okay, well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't what expect. Do you, what do you guys think she should anyway. do? Do you think she should bring it up, or just kind of leave it as it is? I think she should bring it up so that they will be bound. By, so basically, you know, bring it up to free them from the debt. Yeah. So that doesn't, they that seem, doesn't that seem like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to be like, hey, remember that, you know, money you said you were going to pay me last week? Like, I just want you to know that I don't want you to pay me back. Like, I just feel like that's like throwing it in their face. Not, it's the way that you say it, though, if you say it like no. that, it sound like, like you are. Um, well, you could just maybe, do y'all think she should be fine if she says it to the Lord? If, let's say if, she, if you, if, if Rachel, if you said to the Lord, um, you know, I release this person from the debt that they owe me and just pray it to the Lord, or do y'all think she needs to bring it up with the person? What do y'all think? I think she should tell the, just bring it up to the person and say like, you know, I was thinking, um, I've been like, canceling out you know i don't want anyone to owe me anymore so i think that you you can just keep i don't know how to say it but i think you should definitely let them know because otherwise they'll be they'll hold on they'll have that people who owe people they don't just forget about it they carry that with them no. and every time know, they see the person every time they see the person they're reminded that they owe them like i don't i don't i think that's yeah. just kind of how they are and i think that they don't have the money i don't think it's I think if they had the money, they would just pay me back. I think that they didn't have the money. And okay, so that's why I don't want to bring it up. 
Okay. Tell them Which that is, you don't have to. But I do. I do like the way that. Go ahead. Um. Go ahead, Tanika. <laughs> If you tell a person that owes you money that they don't have to pay you back and they can't afford you right now, you're relieving them of having to yeah. pay you. You're relieving them of stress. Right. Has this person acted weird towards you at all, Rachel, since they owed you or not? No. They just, um, when they asked to borrow, I mm-hmm. just knew, like, they just don't have the money. And, that, like, that's just kind of like how how they worded it like oh can I borrow this I'll pay you back tomorrow and I'm like they're probably just asking to borrow because they don't even have it and that's why I don't want to bring it up so okay. I already forgave it and I wasn't I was never going to bring it up after that anyway I never expected it is I think the only reason they asked was because they didn't have it well yeah of course Not- typically somebody asks to borrow something is because they don't have it um, but like they if didn't have it to borrow, all. borrow means I'm going to pay you back. So asking and not saying you're borrowing is a, is a whole different thing. Um, I'm Jayla, I, thought, I thought I saw your hand up. Jayla. Yeah, I would, I would pray, of course, to relieve them from that debt. I would say prayer, but I would address them on the fact of communication. Like I literally will drop friends if they can't communicate with me. Cause even if it's about money this time, it could be a, a lack of communication for something else next time that where there's no way of repaying or anything that could suffice other than communication. So just the fact that the person felt uncomfortable, I would address their uncomfortability of speaking with me, but I would pray on it saying like, you know, Lord forgive them for this debt. Well, see, they're having us over for dinner, and I think that's, like, what they can afford to do. And so she's not being, like, awkward. She's just, I know it's not going to come up again, and she's just, you know, I just don't think she had it. And so I think that they are going to have us over for dinner because they do have food. Like, they can make food. And, yeah, so I wasn't going to bring it up. I just didn't want it to be. I'm going to let the Lord know that I released that and uh, there's nothing there to feel bad okay. about. But I think at the same time, it's almost kind of like the situation with the testimony where, um, you know, she was hesitant to talk to the aunt because she assumed that, you know, the aunt would probably be offended or whatever about the whole, um, um, what's it, what was the thing? What are, what are those things called? <laughs> the catching dream catcher thing so but when she did have the conversation it wasn't anything like that so i think it's kind of the same thing i think we're we're always apprehensive to have certain conversations because we think it's going to be weird but i think if you ask the holy spirit to give you the words of how to say it i think that's what makes a difference and you can really relieve her from that debt because this is the thing you may think that you're doing it by not bringing it up, up at all but trust me the enemy is bringing it up in her mind even if you're not bringing it up. So uh, the only way she's going to really be relieved from that debt is if she knows you're fine. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of. I think her personality kind of tells me that she, (laughs) you know, it wouldn't bring it up. I don't know. Or you can gift it to her, like if there's a birthday coming up, you can say, hey, you know, <laughs> I want the money that you owe me, I want to give that to you as a gift. You don't have to pay me back. Well, I just thought it was like a blessing that I should, you know, like the like the things that you do that only the Lord sees that you're not supposed to like tell other people about. Yeah, but when she's but that- if she's asking to borrow, you, you could, like for me, I would say, if I know someone can't pay me back, I would say, you don't have to pay me back. I'll say, here, here you go, and don't worry about paying me back. I'm giving it to you, you know? Like, I'm gifting it to you. If I know yeah. that they, they can't pay me back. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Now that we're talking about this, it's making me think about some stuff. Because <laughs> I've had, I have had somebody, too. I've had two people wreck two of my cars, which cars I'm still paying on, by the way. Um, oh. And oh I don't God. know about I don't know. If, I mean, I have in my heart obviously released them from the debt, and I've also told them they didn't have to pay me back. But hopefully, that's good. Now I feel like
Hey, patient, I think oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. So I was saying um, now it's making me wonder if I need to go back and spiritually release those people from the dead, you know, because like I said, I had two of my cars wrecked because I let people drive them. Um, <laughs> so I mean, I told them they didn't have to come back, but at the same time, I don't know if I spiritually have released them from that debt or not. But I'm guessing telling them is fine, right? I would think. Okay. Hmm? I don't know. I thought I would spiritually okay. release from the debt, and if they try to pay me back, I'll tell them, no, don't worry about it. I think that there's my a, plan. What's a good way that she could say that where it doesn't sound, you know? I think Jay, Jay Love, I think it was Jay Love, somebody was on to something when you said something about, um, you know, I've been kind of praying about and releasing. What, what were you saying? Something about that? <laughs> So releasing them from the debt, but addressing the communication between the two of you. I would even maybe if the person is willing to, if they speak through text, um, to text it maybe with like notes of love in there. Like, just remember, you can always speak to me. You know, I would never look down on you. I'm here to help yeah, you. Yeah, so I don't think a text is enough. <laughs> mm, I, yeah, because that's what I did. Yeah, because people can kind of the enemy can put a a, a different um, different emotions on text messages mm -hmm. that, that aren't necessarily there because you're not seeing yeah. the person. Um, mm -hmm. But for sure, you just know. Huh? What did you say? I said for oh. sure, know that the person that owes you is thinking about it all the time. I, I, that's the thing. I bet you she is. And that's why I'm like, mm. it's not good to no. just not uh, because you don't see, know how much the enemy's bringing that up in her mind every time she sees you. But see, that's the thing. I don't think that's the case. I, you know how you, how people sometimes have different characters. They're different, like they have different parts of their character. So I, I've just noticed that she's kind of that. She has some of those characteristics where she is fine with receiving. And that's all good. And that's why I knew like she wasn't going to pay me back. And I was fine with that. Okay. So she has a oh, mind. Well, so, go ahead, Tanika. Go ahead. Okay. I just, I was just going to say, um, that's exactly what uh, Faces was talking about. That's the wickedness. Cause you can't ask to borrow something knowing you're not going to pay it back. So you probably really need to tell her that she doesn't have to worry about it. Well, okay, I'm done that's why I want to release her of it, but I, you know, if I if she know. if she has if she seems as if she has the type of characteristic to where she took from you and she has not another thought of it, you know, like she's not thinking about it, then that's even worse <laughs> than her being condemned by the enemy. You know, because the, yeah, the enemy will try to hold us in condemnation. Well, he'll try, he'll try to hold people in condemnation and, and, and put guilt on them. And so if she is not guilty or not feeling like she did anything wrong, that's worse on her part because she doesn't know the spiritual. She may not know the spiritual implications um, behind what she did. So I would do what Jayla did. I'd find, I'm trying to figure out a way of how I would bring it up. See, I'm a little more for, you know, I would have said something, you know, I would have said, hey, oh, don't, oh, in some type of a conversation or like, I don't know if she, what she asked to, to, um, to borrow or what for, she may not have even told you, but if you do know, you know, maybe just say, oh, remember when you, um, you know, don't even worry about it or, um, or, Oh, just in case you're you're thinking of um, paying me back for X, Y, Z, I just want you to know that it's okay. You don't have to. That's a good one. That's a good one because people can be uh, not paying you back um, 
from it, it could be coming from a malicious place like yeah i owe her i'm not gonna pay her because i don't i don't like that she did this or i'm not gonna pay her or aha i owe her and i'm never gonna pay her you know so if it'll, it'll help mm-hmm. both of you if you re- if you communicate with her and say hey you don't even have to pay me back anymore mm-hmm. and sometimes yeah. people will borrow from you because they think that you have they don't know what you got going on in terms of your finances and family and sometimes for people will look at you on the outside and take from you or borrow from you or beg from you because they think you got it and and they will take advantage of you. Right. Yeah. yeah. She she asked if I could just put some gas in her car and I think that's because she didn't have money for gas. And she so, did. Yeah. And so she's like, I'll so she's like, I'll pay you back tomorrow. And you know, I never expected her to at all and I maybe I should have just said that like oh no you don't have to I should have just told her no no but yeah. she's gonna have us over for dinner and I think that's kind of like what she's like you know in her mind was like well you know I'm Rachel paying you back now dinner. yeah <laughs> like <laughs> Rachel like you have to make you know, that- like but but I do, I, do like the, I do like the way you said it though as far as the, the you can say it like that um if you were you know why did you say it? If you were, we need to write this down. If you, if you know, just in case, you know, it was. If you still had that on your mind, don't worry about the gas money or whatever. Um, I do like or, that way of saying it. Just, just kind of like I'm releasing you from it, just in case, you know, just in case it's yeah. positive. I feel. Or the next weird. time you're around bringing her, it up, so yeah. <laughs> well, the next time you gotta make sure the next time you need gas, <laughs> you're around <laughs> her, and you can say. Oh man, I gotta stop and get gas. Oh, and remember that gas money that um you borrowed from me? Don't worry about it. It, it was my gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> or or if you have that dinner, is no way I'd pull that off. Though. If you have dinner, if she's gonna invite you to dinner, you can if it's good, you can be like, Oh my god, that dinner was so good. You know what? Don't even worry about paying me back for gas because that that was more than <laughs> that's really good too. <laughs> <laughs> it is good, but it's gonna be like it's two weeks after the fact. <laughs> that's why I, I feel like I'm digging up the past and digging. But, up, but no, know. that's not on you, Rachel. If, if if it's two weeks after the fact and she told you she was gonna pay you back the next day, that's on her. That's yeah. on her. I know, which is why I feel yeah. weird bringing it up. Well, which but it, which is even the more reason why this is the thing. I'm Tiffany. I'm not Tiffany. I'm Rachel. So this is the thing. If she doesn't know right the spiritual connotations to what she did and because like you said she already kind of has that personality she may just not know but this is the thing if you know and you don't verbally release her from it it, you see what i'm saying it could be on you you see what i'm saying because you knew better this is why i'm worried about it otherwise i wouldn't have even brought it up Exactly. The reason why you're worried about it is because the Holy Spirit is bringing it up so you can release her the right way. If she doesn't know what you know. Can I just wait until she asks me for money again and then tell her um, (laughs) that she she doesn't owe me for this time or the last time? (laughs) No, because you don't know if she's going to ask you for money again. Well, if I hang around her enough. (laughs) Do you think it will make her feel uncomfortable if you bring it up? Yes, I think I will make her feel like I know that she didn't have the money and that will make her feel bad. And that's what I don't want to do. Well, I mean, I don't think so. I think that um, for you have to you have to not assume her feelings until you actually know her feelings, because exactly. that's going to stop you from from relieving her of it if she needs to be relieved of it. You have to only you you only know what you feel about it. You don't know what she feels. Yeah. And yeah. I th- I think this brings up a um a even more interesting topic in terms of us being Christians and followers of Christ. If we because we know certain things um in the spirit realm that take place and we know about spiritual transactions. How responsible are we for other people that don't know? Like you see, so exi- so this is like, to me, is coinciding kind of with what Jayla's testimony was when we first got on. Jayla, you said that, you know, you let your aunt know about that dream catcher. And once you brought it to her attention, she was able to 
she started rec seeing them everywhere and even pulling out old ones, which to me meant that she's in some type of a bondage and them dream catchers were holding her hostage. Um, but you as a Christian, it was your spiritual responsibility to let her know that she was doing something that could mess her, that, that was impacting her. Um, and now Rachel, for you, it's kind of your responsibility <laughs> as a Christian to let this lady know that the enemy could be holding her in bondage um, without even know and also holding you in bondage too, because I mean, I, you seem like such a very sweet woman and I don't, it, you know, it seems like as if you don't want to, I understand you don't want to call her any disease or like any, you know, embarrassment. But I think that that's by design. Like, I think it's by design. Like, the, the amount of guilt you're having for bringing it up when it could be doing something. There are spiritual ramifications for both you and her because of the transaction. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, she's not the... I'm sorry, go ahead. And she's not the only one. Like, there's people, like, now that I'm thinking about it, there's other people, too. Like, I, but I don't know. I'm I'm for sure going to pray about all the other times with every, you know, with anybody else. And hopefully I've never done this to somebody, but, you know, borrowed and forgot to pay back or something. But because you know you can repent. See, that's what I'm talking about with spiritual uh, responsibility, because you know what to do. You can repent and you can ask God to forgive you. For those who don't know, this is this could be doing something something to them. It could even be a block for their financial breakthrough in the spirit realm because they don't know. And that's that's what that's what I was saying. Like as Christians, how and this is for you, patients, how responsible are we for other people when we know something that they don't know and we don't do anything about it? Um, this is where it comes in where the scripture says that we should bear the infirmities of the weak. Um, and, and for the for the most part, when we hear that scripture, it sounds like, oh, well, you know, it, it's somebody being physically weak. Um, but understand people are perishing, what, for lack of knowledge. Okay, if you know that something is a sin and something is enmity against God and this person is in it, and you don't say anything, right? And but is she a Christian? I mean, I don't even know if, the person, if she is a Christian or not. But and you don't say anything, and let's say, God forbid, she dies, and that was the one sin that she didn't repent for because she didn't know. Uh, whose whose uh, hands will her blood be on? You see what I'm saying? We do have a spiritual responsibility to release somebody from something that we know is a sin before God. If we have anything to do with it, um, I think it is a spiritual responsibility for you to you know, release her the right way. Yeah, Rachel, I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Tanika. Okay, I was just gonna say really quick, if I owed someone and I couldn't pay it back, like I'm doing okay now, it's okay. My job provides for me and my kids. And most of the time, I don't need to borrow anything from anybody. But if I did have to and I couldn't pay it back, and if that person said, you know, that money that you borrowed, that's fine. You can um, you can consider it a gift. That would be great. That would, that would relieve me of having to pay that person back or wondering if that person is mad about not getting their money back when I said I could give it. And some people are are afraid to be like, to say, I can't pay it back right now. Because you just never know. And people that are doing, are on hard times, sometimes they, they'll take things and there are people who will, who will ask to borrow things and not intend to give it back. But there are people who borrow and don't know how to pay it back or the way that they were going to pay it back fell through and they are just afraid to bring it up. And if you say to someone who can't pay you back, who wants to, that it's okay like that, 
that is like thank you for them. Yeah, that is a relief for them, um, especially if they, and I, and I think usually that's the case, right? It's like, okay, well, I'll pay back tomorrow, and then tomorrow they didn't get it, or tomorrow they were in another situation where they didn't have, and they just never got the extra to pay it back, and now they're too embarrassed to bring it up. Um, and so you don't really know, you know, she's never, if she's never borrowed money from you before, she doesn't really know how you're responding to it. She doesn't know that you're okay with it. She may be thinking that you're still wanting it back. So I think that will release her. Um, Jayla, your hands up. What's your question? What you just said made me think about, I guess there's a second part to the testimony. The very next day, I had filed my taxes way in the last week of January, like before I was even supposed to. I had done it through tow road tax, um, and they had told me I had to file as a, a different kind of employee for the first time, and I didn't know what I was really doing, so they needed to adjust my state. Um, so I hadn't re I received my regular taxes, but I had my state for so long, I had not received it. And literally the next day, that deposited to my account my state return and I had been waiting for that for so long so that I guess now thinking back is probably the second part of it because I did what I was supposed to do it did more than one thing it released something for me also hmm. interesting Rachel your hands up what's your question okay so like with that being said so if I when I see her if I just say something like Hey, you know, I never reminded you to pay me back for that, you know, gas money because I don't want you to pay me back. I hope that was a blessing to you. And then try to Ooh. just get that out there. But then, like so if she asked me again to borrow money. I should either say this is a gift or no, I can't borrow it to you because I don't, because I don't want to go through this over and over and over again. If okay, I so if she asked to she borrow money again, just say I'm giving it to you as a blessing. You don't have to pay it back. Okay, and then and if then it's something where it's going to put me in a position where I maybe she could feel like she's taking advantage or I can't, then I should just say, no, I can't right now? Yeah, then just say that you can't. I mean, if you don't have the extra to give, then yeah, just say that you can't. I mean, she okay. you've given it to her before, so she knows if you have it, you would, so, yeah. But I should always give it if she asks, even if, <laughs> I if you have to it. give it as a gift. If you have right? it, if you have what? it to give. Obviously, you're not going to take, like, you know, your mortgage and give it to her, you know what I'm saying? But if you have the extra and she's asking for it, then, yeah, um, okay. you can give it. Um, so but just wait, never question to you as a blessing. Question. Oh, Dave raised his hand. Because I was going to. Go ahead, Dave. Wait a minute. Because I got a no, question you, about what you just you, said. Well, you, you, you go ahead, Tiffany. I'll wait, man. Go ahead. My question is, how do you stop people from taking advantage of you then if you always give it when they ask? And and would that be considered enabling? Because if people know that they can always come to you, how do you know that God is not trying to move them in a way to where they need to be self-sufficient? They can't people can't just depend on you. Well, at the same thing, I think we talked about this before as far as when you if you make yourself um, a crutch for somebody, then that's not actually helping them, right? Because they need to learn how to believe God for themselves as well. So you just pay attention. I mean, obviously you can tell when somebody is getting to the point where, hey, they're asking all the time and they're trying to take advantage. You can tell. Um, and at that point, you can just, you know, cut it off. Um, because again, you don't want to become somebody's God or somebody's crush. Um, <clears throat> basically that they're always leaning on because then they're never going to learn how to believe God and have faith for themselves. I don't know if this person is a Christian or not, but if they are, then yeah, you definitely don't want to become their crutch either. Because that's not helping them. Um, somebody said something about boundaries. So what do you guys think though? How would you go about, about setting boundaries? Like let's say if the person does consistently keep trying to ask, um, you know, and they're just going to take an advantage. You, know, you, you tell them. Was, oh, go ahead, Dave. You, you, it's a very simple thing. Just tell them no. We learned at a very young age, no, because if they're taking advantage of you, then you gotta. You can show love, but you could also tell them no. I've done that before because I I knew this individual kept on every time I turned my back, he keeps needing me to give him something, so I kept giving and I kept giving. So eventually, I got a little irritated one day and I told him no. 
I am not giving. And actually, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't use a. I said some few things in that I shouldn't say because I was a little irritated. So I got to repent of that. But I was some future. I said no. But I added some. You know, you see where I'm going with this, right? Because I was so I was so angry because it's like every time I have to keep fucking out money, and he just keeps taking, just keep taking. So after a while, you get a little irritating with it. Because when you see this person, you know that's a need right there, and that's not good. Yeah, especially if they only contact you when they need something. Yeah, so I, I told him straight up no, but I use a little firmness with it though. I could have, I'm be honest, I could have used, I could have dealt, I could have handled a little bit different than I did, and I had to apologize about that. But yeah, I, I wasn't too happy. Tiffany, what were you oh. gonna say? I agree with Dave, and at no is a full sentence. You do not have to explain. <laughs> You do not have to explain. You do not have to apologize. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but I can, and I I have to pay. The, no, 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 no. That's it. No, uh, no. <laughs> Full stop. Like practice it. No, in the mirror, right? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> a, a patient. I think Sonia is trying to get in into class because she wrote some on WhatsApp that she's been trying to get oh, into. Okay. I didn't even see her in there. All right, go ahead. Thank you for letting me know because it does unless I have the thing open, I won't see it. It's supposed to pop up, but for some reason for the last couple of days it hasn't been popping up when somebody tries to come in. I have to actually open up the thing to see. Okay. But okay. <laughs> so just say no, Tiffany. That's what you're saying. Just you say no. We had that we had that campaign in elementary school. Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that can be the hardest thing to do, though, especially when you're a giver. Um, you have to learn. I think I did a video on that, didn't I? I know I did. <laughs> you did. I need you the did. video. <laughs> yes. go, back and, go back and rehearse the video. I don't remember which one it was, uh, but I do remember doing a video on how was it? It wasn't on how to say no. It was on something else. Um. Yes, I think it was on boundaries. You were talking about like not letting people wear you out, like in burnout. Okay, and learning how to say okay, so it was like one of what one about boundaries or something like that. Yes. Okay, so I think it probably would be in the leadership series that I did about like along, along those videos. But yeah, go through there and look, Rachel, because I know I did a video on that, and you have to learn how to gracefully say no. That's the thing; it's just being tactful with it, and don't feel like you have to. Every time, um, you know, like I said, if you don't have it, if somebody just keeps asking, 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 um, yeah, you have to learn how to say no. Um, Jayla, I see your hands up. If you have a question, is that like the definition? Like, if you say like you're spiritually radical or something, like what is the spiritual way to that a person just doesn't care? It's like I'm knowing what God says. I don't care. Cause in my like before being saved, it's like I just didn't care. I was speaking up. I would say what I what I wanted to happen or what I didn't want to happen. But now as a Christian, it's like what is that? How do you do that the right way? Cause I don't care about anybody else's feelings when it comes to God. And it's like God said what he said, and you, I'm following that rule. So if you're going to be around me, you got to follow that rule. So what is the right way to describe that? Um, great question. Um, I don't remember what I said in the video, guys. Um, I mean, anybody else on here have had somebody, you know, trying to take advantage of them? Maybe we can give an example of how you were able to do it so we can have some realistic um examples and not just you know theory nobody's ever had to deal with that situation before where somebody kept asking and asking you for stuff yes but i just <laughs> yes. told them yes. Yes. I'm, okay <laughs> <laughs> so for what did real, you do okay. one at a time tiffany first and then rachel and then dave and okay then so the, it's happened several times, but in the time where I felt bad enough to actually explain, because there's been times where, like I said, I'm just saying no. And then there, uh, th th nobody can't come back and come ask me why. I said no. <laughs> but <laughs> um, there was a time where I have felt 
like, okay, I felt bad. And I, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, and I spun it in a way of where it's like, okay, if I have things that I have to take care of myself and if I give to you, I won't be able to do what I need to do. So unfortunately, I'm not able to help you. And and I uh, and then I've also said, you know, well, this is why I'm not rich yet. You know, once I'm rich, I'll be able to give all the time with no thoughts about it. And then it'll change the subject. And normally they'll laugh and oh yeah, yeah, we all we're all working to get there. And it's like, yeah, we are. So and then it'll kind of go from there. Um, but there have been other times where I'm just like, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, who was next? Uh, there was three people that had their hands up. I'll go patience. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, like like I was telling you earlier, it was this particular individual that always needed a little money for this situation or for that. And I used to give it to him. But it got to the point every time you see this person, he always want money. So he eventually one day, I don't know if I guess he caught me at the wrong time and I said something I wish I never said. And I told him no, but I was was very mean about it. But I did went back and apologize about it, but it it's because after a while, I, I realized he was using me. Okay. And then and this is the thing, too. For those of you who have children, you should know how to say no. <laughs> All right. Uh, TDK, your hands up. Um, yeah. I When I realize somebody is, is using me, usually I would give them... I'm sorry, my phone rang. But usually I would give them like a little leeway but not that much as to like um meaning if i'm letting them borrow something they usually get about two to three more times because I, I usually give a person like two to three more times depending on what kind of person they are i believe that you're supposed to know the people that you're giving money to and I look at their actions and stuff. If you're taking the money that I'm lending you and just going to go party with it or just go do crap with it, I will, I'll just stop living, lending the money. I'll just say, I don't have, um, right now I can't do it. Or if they kept coming back, I would just tell them like, I would just be direct. I would just tell them like, I don't have money for you to go play with. Like, I can go play with my own money. Like, you just <laughs> have to find a way to go get your own play money because I have kids. And if I'm giving you my money and you're not even using it right, you know, I, it's like I'm just throwing my money away. But right. I would be, usually be that direct with somebody that I really know. And they, they know that, it, hey, if I have an issue with you, I'm going to say it. I'm, it's not to hurt your feelings or nothing like that, but I'm just letting you know, like, you can't just run through my money because I want to run through the little bit that you plan with right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just be direct. Okay. That works too. Rachel, will you say something? Well, so I have this homeless friend and they, you know, contact me for money for food. You know, they don't have anything because they're pretty much homeless. They're squatting right now. And it just, it was wearing on me and then his son was asking me for money and I just I I been trying to just you know be giving and blessing and I just can't so one day his son texts me hey it's me can I have twenty dollars and like I'm not I don't even know his son very well and so I did tell him that I'm feeling like I'm just being used and you know we're not really you know I just I'm not their bank and I have a family and they're they need to like figure it out. I can't support them financially. And so they haven't asked for anything since I kind of, they haven't asked for much, I should say, since I kind of said that, that I feel like they're just using me. Um, but I, they, I have voicemails right now where I'm sure they're telling me, we have no food, we have no gas, we don't know what to do, what should we do? And I can't just keep giving him money. So I have to call him back today. Later. Wait, so what? They texted you because they don't have gas money. They have they don't know what to do. They, I mean, the same God that provides for you can provide for them. That's what I told him. I told him to pray and, the, and then to ask God to, you know, do something specific. I was like, if you need to get to this town because they have a food pantry, then 
you know, go ask the Lord to send someone to meet you at the diner and see if they can take you. Because I know that they just want me to give them gas money so they can get to the other town to get to the food pantry. But I can't just keep dishing out money. And um, so, yeah. So it took it took a long time for me to finally say something to them. And they've been good about it, but I know they still come to me with their problems asking what should they do. So that was the last thing I told them was to pray for a specific answer. Like if you need to get to this town and you have no gas, pray the, for the Lord to send someone to meet you somewhere to take you there. So he didn't, he didn't want to try hitchhiking. And it's too far to walk. Um, so yeah, so I got that. But then this other friend, the same one with the with the money thing, I can see the writing on the wall. I can see where this is headed. The more and more I'm contacted, it's 99% of the time to ask me for favors. So yeah, I've been trying to figure out how to say no, because otherwise I'm going to be babysitting for free all summer long <laughs> because they've been contacting me. You know, oh, can you watch my kids? Oh, can, my kids want to know if they can come over and play. You know, I'll pick them up in like four hours. Like it's been, I need to learn how to say no, but I also want to make sure that I'm not just being selfish. Well, I mean, like I said, it sounds like you're being taken advantage of because and you and this is not the first time and people can. And that's the thing. People can tell that in your personality if you're somebody that they can get over on. And if they know they can and they're that type of person, they will. They'll walk all over you. Um, so what I'm saying, apply the same way that you say no to your children you have to learn how to apply to adults, because essentially it's not any di different from saying no to your child, because. If you, by you helping them, you're becoming a crutch, then you're not really helping them anyway. Because they're never going to learn how to trust God for themselves. If they know they can just call you, then you become their God and you don't want that. So for their own good, you need to tell them no. It's kind of like if you see your child go in a direction where they can hurt themselves, you just say way you would tell them no, you need to tell this person no as well. With the same love that you would tell your child no with. Um, Tiffany and then Tanika. Um, okay, so I found the video on I was scrolling through your YouTube. So I found it and it's called I put it in the chat. It's called Christians are not weaklings are not weaklings. Be saved and keep your there's a timestamp of them. Uh, and keep your backbone. That's the name of the video that you did on how to be, set boundaries with people. And I just posted it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Thanks for putting that in there. All right, awesome. Tanika, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say um, about the part where Rachel said that she wants to make sure she's not being selfish. You just have, just ask yourself, why am I saying no first? And then um, you can check your own heart to make sure you're coming from a, a good place. And if that clears, then you don't have to think that you're being selfish. Just trust your own intentions. Like, clearly you have a really good heart. I don't think you would do something out of selfishness. I mean, we all have our selfish moments, but I think that you have a good enough heart to where you have you can afford the room to tell some, somebody no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially if this is if you have multiple people trying to take advantage of you, that should let you know that um, I don't want to say you're giving up a vibe that the word you, you could be taken advantage of or not. But it's almost like people can tell that, you know, they can take advantage of you. So something needs to be put in place to make sure people, you know, that door is not opened going forward as well. Um, otherwise, you know, it'll be the same thing. Um, like that's the the almost friends, <laughs> which are not really friends. They're just really leeches. All right, Dave, what's your question? Yeah, uh, I need to ask a question. Uh, I remember one time I went to Kroger's to pick up some, uh, well, I actually went to do some grocery shopping. And apparently I came out and I saw like some homeless people at the stop sign because that's where they normally hang out at. So I said, well, let me go get them some money and you know, so they can get something to eat. So I give them some money and they start arguing with me because I didn't give them enough. They, they was upset. Okay. Yeah. I did not give them enough money. 
Oh, so what do you do in a situation? Yeah. What? Okay, Tiffany, go ahead. So what would you do in a situation like that, uh, Patience? I would probably do this. I'd probably bust out laughing. Like, are you seriously trying to get mad at me because I didn't give you enough money and you begging for money? Yeah, they, they did. I think I would laugh. That would be so funny. I would take it back. I'd be like, oh, really? Oh, wait, come, come. Give I me was this. just about to say that. Like, <laughs> I'll take it back. <laughs> I'll definitely take it back, too, but it would be funny. <laughs> you better be glad you got something. I mean, I wouldn't take it back. I mean, obviously, if you bless somebody, with don't be an Indian giver. But um, <laughs> but I would, I would bust out laughing, though, and just walk away. Um, Tiffany, what are you going to say? Um, I was going to say... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was going to say um, for Rachel, um, or what, well, for Rachel's situation, what you were saying, um, where, you, where you were saying that people can give off a vibe, well, some people can give off a vibe where they were, the enemy will, or other people will send, will come to you knowing that you will, they could kind of take advantage of you. That can be, I feel like that can be a trick from the enemy too, because in another aspect, if people are always coming to you, and borrowing from you, um, the enemy could try to get you into a place of hardening your like hardening your heart for where you don't want to do for other people. So you're going to stop your blessings. And then also, if you are still giving to those people, he might also be trying to get you into resentment because if people stop paying you back or if you lose faith in people um, with doing what they said that they're going to do, you may now be, you may feel some type of resentment towards them, which is unforgiveness, and that will also stop your blessings. I feel like it's a strategy. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah. it's not um, because she's naturally a giver. I don't think that's an issue, but it's just those people who you know are taking advantage. Because like you said, with this lady, you can already see where it's going. You can tell when people are trying to take advantage versus, hey, somebody really just needs help. You should be able to tell those concerns. Um, Okay, who else was saying something pertaining to that? But I, I want to know for the rest of y'all, what would y'all do if you, if you gave somebody money and they say it wasn't enough? <laughs> what would y'all do? That would just be so funny to me. Like I, My initial reaction to most things is to laugh. That would be so funny. <laughs> Especially a homeless person. I'm like, how are you going to be picky about what I give you out of my pocket? <laughs> I would start preaching. I would be like, you and God know what you wanted that money for, and he purposely did not give you enough because he don't want you to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was a little shocked by that because when they was getting mad, I, I looked back at them, was surprised. I said, look, I'm giving y'all money. I mean, I don't have to. And they was complaining this wasn't enough. <laughs> uh, you could have let them know Jesus fed the multitude with a slice with bread and fish and barely any of that. So make it work. Yeah. You better break it and, bless it and let it multiply. <laughs> <laughs> Terry says she would say uh, the devil is alive. <laughs> Go ahead, Oh, it would just it would. When I just don't understand, like, how can you tell somebody that is not enough when you are asking me for my money? You don't have any money, but what I gave you isn't enough. Like, where is <laughs> where is the parameter of what is enough for you that I'm freely giving you? I don't get it. <laughs> I think I would have had to have a monologue. Like, I would have stepped on my soapbox. You need a little talking to. <laughs> 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 so Dave, what did you do? I want to know what you did. I look at him like it was crazy and then I walked away because I was didn't understand why you have an attitude. I'm I'm the one who came out of my way to give you some money. And then you get mad because it wasn't enough. Uh, wait, how much money did you give him, Dave? Uh, usually like ten dollars. Because it was just, because uh, it was like a, 
it was near a convenience store because you got Kroger's, you got uh, the gasoline station. I mean, everything is with, you know, there's a lot of different businesses and stuff around there where you can eat and stuff like that. So I give them some money, but to them, it wasn't enough. And they was getting an attitude with me. I mean, ten dollars, you can go and get you some little Caesars. Get you not a to them, not stuff. to them, it wasn't. Right. It, it wasn't enough. So I, I just walked away, man. That was a lot of pack of noodles. They could have went to the dollar store, got a bowl. I, I know. Noodles, <laughs> and it would have been enough for the, that day, the next day. Have that little bowl to go into the convenience store. They warm them noodles up every day. They was. <laughs> But you know what, patient, typically when I give homeless people money, they, they tend to be grateful for even a dollar. But for I don't know who these people were, but for some reason, they had an attitude about it. Well, that's the crazy part. It was That's the funny yeah. thing, though. It'd be like some people be in a situation because God's trying to humble them and then they still brass for Yeah. I mean. And they still, how you would get mad at somebody because you begging and they didn't give you enough? That's. That's like the, the ultimate manifestation of the spirit of pride. I think they were in that situation because God's trying to humble them and they're not getting the message. Yeah, there is no such thing as bougie and broke. There are some <laughs> bougie and broke people. <laughs> bougie and broke. So they, they want lobster money, but they beg it. Yeah. Yeah. We got I, we have a friend like that. Like she wants a wedding, but she wants the friends to pay for it. A wedding, a whole wedding. She wants the fr the friends to pay for it. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> wow. I mean, what happened to her family paying for it, and the, and the guy that she's marrying helping to pay for it? Well, he doesn't make a lot of money, and she doesn't either. She gets the social security check, but she um okay, so they need to have a social security check when go to the justice exactly. the exactly. courthouse. <laughs> yes. The courthouse is, is open. She wants a dream wedding with literal baloney, a baloney to, to offer to <laughs> and she wants people to pay for it for her. Well, that's she not how canceled work. the wedding because she couldn't get like nobody was volunteering okay so she can again she can go uh, whatever friend she's asking for this money to pay for her wedding could tell her to go to the justice of peace you have to pay for what you can afford because if you start by paying for the wedding next thing you're gonna do is be paying for their mortgage and then paying for new children and all that stuff and buying them diapers because it's not gonna end with a wedding that's why you can't even open that door the guy we were recording. I'm just saying, because if, if you pay for her wedding, she now she thinks she can ask you for something else. Next thing, she will be asking you to buy them a car. And then next thing, you'll be paying for her kids to go to college. I'm just saying, like, she's a grown woman. Grown enough to be getting married. It's not my responsibility to take care of you. The Bible says... The man leaves his father and mother and cleaves onto his wife, which means his wife is now his responsibility. Yeah. Could you imagine if Jacob came when he was looking for Rachel? Could you imagine? Um, I think it was Isaiah who sent um, his servant to go ahead and go find a, find Rachel for for Jacob. Am I? Am, is, do I have the story correct? I think it was Rebecca, right? Rebecca, I'm okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Rebecca, Rebecca. And could you imagine? And and, and they had to, and the servant had to come with all of the jewels and this and that. Could you imagine if 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 it was where like it's like you know yeah we want you to come over here and come get with our guy but we don't have no money. Is she supposed to leave her parents' house? <laughs> no. Right. Right. I think people have marriage backwards. It's like if you're gonna if you're thinking about taking that next step. With somebody, you better be prepared to do, what, biblically speaking, what you need to do. I mean, if you're grown enough to be making a covenant and marrying somebody, you should be grown enough to pay for your own wedding. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't even think weddings are that serious. When if if I'm with somebody and we decide to get married, that's because you are 
I believe that you are who God chose for me to be with. And if we got to go down to the courthouse and get married, that's just what we're going to do. Because it's not about all that, you know, like having, who. I'm, of course, you know, most people want a beautiful wedding. But at that moment, I just want you to be my husband. I don't care about what's on the wall, what kind of food we have, man. I just want us to be married. But it, it, it's more of the show part for that friend in particular. But that's the thing. Why do people even want a big wedding? It, it's, it, that's Because being a wedding planner for, I had a wedding planning business for like 13 years. And one of the things I would tell people is like, why you waste, don't waste your money on stuff that people's not even going to remember. You spend all this money on food. They're just going to eat. That's going to be another meal they eat and poop. Like, they're not going to take nothing about it again. Why are you spending thousands of dollars to feed people, you know, filet mignon or whatever? Like, they're not going to remember none of that. You, If you're going to put money into your wedding, it needs to be spent on you and your spouse. Like, put your money into your honeymoon. Like, the time that y'all are going to spend together. Because the day of the wedding, that's going to go by so fast. People are not going to remember none of that stuff. It, it'll be just, hey, I remember I was there. That's it. People spend so much money on that wedding. And it's one day. And they're trying to impress people who don't even like them. Yeah. I, I I feel the same way. And I just feel like I'm just, maybe I'm just not girly enough. Because that stuff don't really matter to me. Like, it doesn't. I just want my husband. Where he at? <laughs> I, I would I agree with you with the weddings are beautiful you know I love the ceremonies and all that but if I didn't have one I'm okay with that I would much rather a elaborate honeymoon because those are memories that you'll have forever with your spouse and especially if you can go to more than one location you know I, I think about people who are spending between 15,000 on the low end up to thousand up to, you know fifty thousand dollars on these a huge weddings think about what type of vacation you can have with that or honeymoon and a down payment for a, ho a home if you don't have a home to come back to so no it's it's yeah i mean there's nothing wrong with having a beautiful wedding but it's just the it, the thing that the three things that i tell people to spend their money on is the honeymoon their pictures and their video because when that day is gone, which is going just like that, the only thing you would have to remember it by are those three things. The time that you spent together on your honeymoon, your video, and your pictures. That's what you need to spend the money on getting good quality video and pictures. And what people eat, just get somebody that know how to cook. Like, it, it's that, that's not serious. It's one another meal they're going to have and forget about. And go in the bathroom and poop it out. Like, it's not even a big deal. <laughs> um, the wedding cake, you could save on that because I used to make cakes too. I remember I did a 10 tier wedding cake for my best friend's wedding. And the nine tiers was styrofoam on the inside, and then the bottom one was real cake. So we saved about $1,500 on the wedding cake by doing it like that. So, I mean, it's spend the money on your pictures, your video, and your honeymoon. That's That day is going to go by so fast. And that's all you're going to have to remember it by. And everybody else, have those people that just come into your wedding to eat your food anyway <laughs> and talk about you talk about talk about what they don't like <laughs> exactly so at the end of the day it's about you and your mate and remembering that day and the time that you spend together but six fifty thousand dollars is is now kind of like the average that people are spending on weddings um Jayla says you're making your own wedding cake for your wedding day. I'm definitely if making I'm my going, own cake. If I'm going to be there, am I coming to the wedding? Yes. If, if it happens, yes. Before, hopefully, everybody don't get scattered. Everybody's invited. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, make sure you spend money on the, on the good stuff. Because I've seen people spend money on, like, the food and stuff, and then have their uncle taking pictures and like you do know those pictures are all the thing you gotta have to remember this day by right like when it's over <laughs> pictures in the video that's what you need to spend money on getting professionals to do everything else didn't matter but um i don't even know how we start talking about this oh yeah the friend paying for the wedding but yeah so what do you think the friend is that friend gonna pay for the wedding 
please don't pay for weddings for your friends, guys. If they're grown enough to get married, uh, then their spouse should be able to pay for it in their family. No, they're not paying for the wedding. Um, what they did do was um, they're planning everything and making her pay for it. They're they're gonna they they even decided the wedding day because she's so dramatic that they was like, um, we can't deal with this for another year. So you're going to get married on this day. We're going to get this over with. We're going to plan where it is and everything. Oh, my goodness. Y'all going to pay for it. Drama queen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, like, you paid for it. Yeah, go ahead, Tiffany. Now I was going to ask you. So, so speaking of drama queens. Mm -hmm. So when you have people in your life. <laughs> That us as Christians, Jay was laughing. Um, us as Christians, we're supposed to love everyone. We're supposed to, you know, do as much as we can for our, you know, love our brothers and sisters in Christ. But when you have people that you know, you know, you're supposed to love them, but you just don't like them, and not necessarily them, but maybe their personality or the way they they the way they go about doing things. How do you handle that as a Christian? Because we're not commanded to like the, the we're commanded to love everyone. We're not commanded to like people. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, there's a lot of people that um, even family members that can be hard to like, but you still love them. Um, huh? That's a good question. I think we talked about this before too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I'm trying to remember. Um, how I said that, this is the thing, if you can love people with the love of Christ um, and you don't have to feel bad if you don't like us, at the end of the day, there's always going to be people who you don't necessarily like their personality or like being in their presence because we're all different. Okay, And if you spend enough time around somebody, you're going to probably start not liking certain things about them. That's that's just, you know, point blank. I don't care. They can be the best person in the world. They can be your mom and your dad, whoever, it doesn't matter. Um, that's just how it is because we're all different. So I think, you know, learning how to love people with the love of Christ, basically treating your neighbor as you would like to be treated. You can do that even if you don't like somebody. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. So I don't have to feel guilty. I can still treat you the way I would want to be treated, but not really if you're, if you're just not my vibe, you know, it's okay. And I don't have to feel guilty about it. Right. I mean, you don't have to feel bad about that. Just um, you're not going to like everybody. I mean, that's impossible. But yeah, you can still love them with the love of Christ. Um, and I think if that's that's what makes it simple. If you just follow the treat your neighbor as you would want to be treated, you can love anybody. I don't care if you know if they're the person that abused you or a parent that gets on your nerves. It doesn't matter. If you just learn how to treat people the way that you want to be treated, it's universal. Is that easy to do, though, if the person is getting on your nerves? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was just going to say that, no, because I deal with this with my grandma. And sometimes I feel bad, but I can't answer the phone sometimes. I just can't answer the phone at all. And she'll talk to other people like, she doesn't even answer the phone. It's like nobody has the heart to really tell her, like, she don't want to talk to you. <laughs> well, uh, she probably heard it today. I don't know if she watches this, but. <laughs> um, but this is funny, though, because it's usually family, though. It's, it is usually family that just gets on your nerves like that. I mean, I have some family members that, that I can't stand being in the same room with them longer than five minutes. And then the other family members feel the same way and not want to say nothing either. But um, that's just how it is. Doesn't mean I won't love them. And if you don't have energy to answer the phone because you know they're you know going to start something, then don't answer the phone and don't feel bad about it. Um, at the end of the day, you need to do what you need to do for your sanity as well. Because you can't let somebody else pull you off the rails either. Yeah, and it's, it's spiritual also. She's a blind witch and 
it's to the point where like when she comes to talk to my aunt it's like she is outside in her car because it's like you're not you no you can't bring that stuff into my house you're not bringing that energy in my house it, no i don't care who you are you're my grandma but there's it's, it's serious over here and you're not exposing my children to none of that wow hmm. rachel says yes um trying to make sure i got everything Kayla, you said she's a blind witch. Are you sure she's not a, a a witch who knows? I don't know, mom. Like she says things to my mom to where she feels like it's just normal. Like she'll say things like, "Oh, well, yeah, well, I did wish bad things on people over crystals," and it's like, how did you even learn how to do that, or who told you to yeah. do that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a blind witch to me. Oh, yeah. she doesn't sound like she's because a blind witch is somebody who's doing it in their dreams or they're sleeping. They're not aware of it. Oh, if okay. She did it over crystal. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, and then she talks about me, and it's like people tell me, "I'm like, you want to talk about me and smile on my face?" Like, no, I'm not. I'm not really nice. God has taught me how to be nice, <laughs> and <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> me too. I I have to put intentions to being nice to people that I don't want to be nice to. I'm doing pretty good, but if I don't want to be around you, most likely you you gonna know it. But it, I, okay, so I have a cousin that I don't particularly like being around. I pray for her everything. I hope God encounters her because she really needs it. I don't know if she's a blind witch. I, I don't know. She, she is she, if I could say that she is intentionally evil I, I really think she is like she is the type of person that is happy when she sees somebody else suffering oh wow and she's close to my grandmama my grandmama is not like the nicest person but she's my granny i love her mm -hmm. and my granny has a type of personality to where if you're not taking advantage of her then you, she doesn't really like you I, there's something on my granny. So if you're taking advantage of her, she wants to be around you all the time. But if you treat her respectfully, she she will not be the nicest person to you. So this cousin who like takes, she steals from old people. She lies all the time. And my granny just loves being around her. So she, she tried to accuse my granny of stealing from her. And my granny didn't. She said, this cousin set up a situation to where my granny was doing something illegal and she tried to pin it on my granny. And she said that she was going to file charges on my granny because my granny wouldn't do something for her. So I put in the family chat that if she doesn't, um, somebody to tell this cousin that they need to chill out before I call uh, adult protective services on her. And I put a statue of... Um, financial abuse on the elderly in the 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 family chat. So like now at family get togethers, I can't bring myself to talk to her. Like I will hug everybody in the room literally and just walk past her like I don't see her. Like I can't like I'm more than willing to talk to her about it. I just can't bring myself to acknowledge her. So how am I supposed to go about that situation? <laughs> <clears throat> so why really i mean really really think about this why can't you get yourself to acknowledge her because it sounds like something a little bit deeper she's not a she's been given like many many chances with over the years even as a kid she's not she's never been a nice person never she's fun to be around um I think that goes without saying why like she doesn't really care about much but she's not nice like any it, if she's been nice to you it's because she's planning on how to manipulate you on the back end and everybody mm -hmm. in my family knows this so i'm just tired of it like i don't i pray for her all the time but i just don't feel like pretending anymore like i don't like you i love you but i don't like you and any way that anytime that you are interacting with her, something is going on on back end. So I just don't want to indulge in all the bull anymore. So just basically the manipulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you guys think? 
I think she's messed up. So she set your grandma up to be arrested? Yeah, that's really messed up. Yeah. Yeah. She that's... they she had her do something illegal for, for money. And then when my granny didn't want to do something else, she was like, well, I'm about to tell the police that you did such and such. And I was like, no, you're not. You would be going to jail for elderly abuse because my granny has dementia. Oh, so wow. Just slide yourself into jail. Do it if you want to, but you're going to be the one going to jail. That's so messed up. Uh, that is messed up. That should be fair. That knowing that your granny has. Wow. Mm -hmm. But my granny loves her. Like, it's nothing we can do to keep her from her because mm -hmm. she just wants to be around her all the time. So when she does do things to her, I just let her know, you know, you can do it if you want to, but you got to go through me to do it. And you may be the one ending up in jail. Wow. Um, I think, like you said, um, she's your cousin, so you love her, um, but you hate her wickedness. And that's something that's okay, because God does, God hates sin, God hates wickedness. If she's constantly stealing She's manipulating people in your family. She's using people. Um, that's it's okay to now the hug the hugging thing. I don't know. I, I would do. I would like to hear other people's perspective on that because I would do the same exact thing that you did. I can't be fake. So if I don't like you, I'm not touching you. I'm not going to embrace you and oh hey. Oh. I'm not doing all that. I'll speak, I'll, you know, hey, how are you doing? But don't come over to me and embrace me. Um, and I'm not going to embrace you either because I, I don't know. So I, I don't actually know how to handle that part. But I, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes that could be awkward because I've had that happen where somebody tried to hug me and it's like, why are you trying to hug me? But <laughs> it happens so fast that it's kind of like you just naturally kind of hug them back. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely, someone like that you probably do need to distance yourself um, from, and just you know, pray for her, keep her in prayer. That's about it. Um, hmm. But that's interesting, though. Any other comments on that? Oh, somebody's trying to get back in. Hold up, I mean, it doesn't sound like you're being mean to her going out of your way and being mean to her so seems like you're handling it okay yeah and i'm i'm definitely a stern person but i give people chances and i, I just got tired of giving her chances she's been mean since we were little kids <laughs> like she would get us in trouble like you know and when you're when you had when you're with your family, your little cousins and stuff, you know, we do stuff to each other, but mm -hmm. she would do things to intentionally get us in trouble. And wow. she, I don't know. I feel bad for her because I'm like, I don't think she understands that hell is a real place. Was she, I mean, abused or anything? Cause it just sounds like, you know, there's something deeper going on there. I was just about to ask that, like maybe pray and ask God to reveal what's making her so evil, even from a child. Because even if you expose it to her or talk to her about it, when you feel comfortable, if you feel comfortable, but just pray about it. So there's sometimes I see people break down, like, how did you know that? Or, yeah, you know. Mm, I, could, I could run it by some other family members and they can talk to her. She's so manipulative, y'all. She will. So she got an abortion, y'all. She <laughs> said the doctor intentionally killed her baby. She broke down in front of us crying. And she had made up that whole story. Like, I felt bad for her. But come to find out that the doctor did abortions and she just got an abortion. So she basically used the story as a way to manipulate you guys. Yeah. Instead of mm -hmm. just, I mean, you could have kept, simply just kept your business your business instead of, you know, making up that whole thing. 
So yeah, and, and so I say that to say that yeah. she's very emotionally manipulative too. So I don't think I would be able to have a conversation without. I don't think I would believe what she's saying. But it, that makes sense though, because you, as a to be a child and be the way she was, it it just don't come out of nowhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Something had to have been done. Um, something traumatic had to have been done. Um, you know, for that situation. Diane, I see your hands raised. What's your question? So um, I I could be wrong, but I'm just sensing maybe, like patient patients was saying, there's something deeper here, and um, it could be to the extent that she isn't able to take on those responsibilities. That's why she's taking it out on others. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, it almost sounds like the behavior of somebody who's an addict. Have you ever seen like a drug addict or some that something like that? Like a lot of times they will, because I used to know people who are addicted to things, and they, I mean, they will lie. I mean, cry, whatever they have to do to manipulate you into giving them money so they can go get that drug or whatever. So it almost sounds like that. So the question is, what is the addiction? That's what we need to find out. It may not be drugs. It may not be something you can see on the outside. It may be attention. It could be other things, but it sounds like an addiction. Yeah, that could be true. Um, I know she's definitely addicted to attention. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It, it could be something. It could be because, I mean, she's not she doesn't have good character. So I, I wouldn't doubt if she had an addiction to something. Not saying that people with ba bad character always have addictions. What I'm saying is, like, there could be, like, conduits contributing to the behavior. Okay. okay. What is that? To steal from people. What do the rest of you guys think? Anybody have had any, know anybody who's in situations like that? You all think it is an addiction or could it be something else? Um, I think it's an addiction or it could be some type of a plot. And I, I'm not trying to put this on her, but some type of, uh, she, I don't know, some type of uh, sexual uh, promiscuity or something. Okay. Because to, to lie and manipulate for money, to try to use emotion. To me, it's, it's, it's emotional witchcraft. Because if you're trying to make people feel bad for you, um, based off of lies and making up scenarios that didn't even happen and, you know, just to get the result that you want, that's emo that's emotional witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And and because then what type of person would you be if you didn't feel bad for her? Or what type of person? I don't even know who would do something like that. It, like you said, if you had an abortion and you just, that was a decision that you made, that's between you and God and trying to fix that with God. Why are you telling anyone and then lying about it and saying that you had a miscarriage? Or the, the she didn't even say she had a miscarriage. She said the doctor killed her baby. Why would you do something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't ask for that. I'm like, we just didn't have a conversation and here you come with this. Like, what? I mean, at the time I believed it because that's when we were still cool too. But afterwards, I'm like, y'all, it's something wrong with Riri. I, two people in my family, I'm one of the two people we jokingly said if we got hurt in a circle and prayed that we believe a demon would come out. And that's yeah, before I knew like about it. spiritual warfare. Yeah, I mean, and it's like she was hurt and that hurt has pushed her into, you know, it's gotten worse over the years. She never got healed from it. And it's just gotten deeper and deeper um, because manipulation and witchcraft go hand in hand. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Because witchcraft itself is just the manipulation of different things, like mm -hmm. like your words and things like that. Um, yeah, but it, it sounds like she's definitely going through some type of trauma. Probably as a child, because you said she's been like this since she was a child. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, I don't know if you can have that conversation with her, but at least pray about it. Maybe the Lord will reveal to you. From what it is something it seems like something happened to her for sure because a lot of times when yeah. you see women <clears throat> and i don't want to and I, I don't even want to just say women and men because a lot of the 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 men who are gay pride or whatever 
they 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 like a lot of attention like they put on to pretend to be women or they're very extra or they try to you know they want to be seen so women who do that a lot of times i find where either they were completely neglected and they had to um they had to fight for attention you know they their parents didn't show them any type of love and they have rejection issues or they were shown the wrong type of attention and that's the attention that they think that they need to be getting. Mm -hmm. And Diane, I see your hands up. What's your question? Um, it's just adding to what everyone else is saying. So it makes sense that um, if she had trauma at a young age, then that would mean possibly that she never grew out of it, therefore she can't handle um, grown up situations, which which would make sense based on like you know what we're hearing here, that you know when it comes down to really uh, serious circumstances or situations, she's shifting the blame on other people because I don't think based on this um, from what I'm he from what I'm hearing she's not able to take on that responsibility herself. And I think um, the way you're re responding to this is very natural. Um, I think you're responding to this because, you know, you are in a place where you're healthy, so you're able to observe all this. Um, yeah, that's all I've, I can think of right now, though. All right. Tanika, were you saying something else? Um, I, I was, but I lost my train of thought because I was listening to what she was saying. But I agree with what, what she said. Yeah, because I, 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 well, okay. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to try to jog your memory. I was saying uh, before that, we were talking about, you know, whether or not she had, had some type of trauma as a child. I, be I believe she may have. We we know in our family that um, our great granny, her daughters, her sister, they used to they used to do um, witchcraft, like burn candles and stuff, trying to man manipulate situations to get men, money, and we in the family we feel like like the backlash of that has come on to us. And I think that she probably got like something heavy on her and that probably caused like trauma in her childhood that we don't know about and all that. If I don't know, I, I, I never thought that maybe she had went through something, but yeah, it, it makes sense. It makes sense that she possibly could have. Yeah, I mean, like I most people say, hurt people hurt people, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so bad. I, I worry that she may be a person whose soul is captured because she delights in other people's pain. Mm -hmm. You can lit I've literally caught her smiling at somebody's pain. So you do know that wasn't her, right? I, I I would hope that it's what, not. Just tell me that's what spirit that is. I know exactly what spirit that is, and there's definitely abuse. Um, the there is there is a specific spirit that laughs when other people are going through pain and they're manipulating them. You can tell me what spirit that is, and I I know it just from doing a lot of deliverance. It's not the spirit that is typically um, associated with something like this. But so she's a woman. Is it Jezebel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She always has this smirk. This almost like a evil smirky laugh on her face when she's you know, manipulating people or there she's um, or she's watching somebody you know go through something. That's that's one of the manifestations. This conversation is making me realize that Jezebel is running rampant in my family. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's the spirit that would lead somebody to do different things to manipulate men and things like that. 
So it's it's generational, and things come stronger in each generation they go down, including the anointing. Mm -hmm. And witchcraft too. You said Jezebel is running rampant in your family. You said your 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 aunts and your great granny and stuff used to. Wait, was it? Are, would they be considered your aunts? You said your grandma's sis, children or sisters? Yeah, my, my great grandmother's sisters and my um her kids, they did it. So your okay, so your great grandma, so your grandma, so your grandma, great aunts, and aunts. yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, ooh, yeah, yeah. Wow. And that may be the reason why you're here, Tanika. You know, repair of the breach. Mm -hmm. so. We made a foundation. Yeah, I think so. I uh, I actually had a dream that I went to this fountain, and I turned it. I had rags on in the dream, but I turned this the fountain, the faucet on, and gold came out of the faucet. And I got this feeling like I was supposed to do something for my family. I thought that it was money. I got saved, I knew that it was this. Hmm. Interesting. What do y'all think that dream means? So so basically it was just you turn out a faucet, a faucet in the dream and then gold was coming out of it? Yeah, it was liquid gold pouring out. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And I had on rags in the dream. But I, I just knew, I was like, this is what I was supposed to do for my family. I think... <laughs> Um, Jesus is uh, living water. So you went to that faucet in rags uh, in your sinful state. You went and you turned on that. You went and turned on that faucet and through Jesus's living water because gold, in the Bible, gold is not all, gold to, from in the beginning, like in the beginning in the Genesis chapters and stuff like that. I didn't see where the gold was used for monetary transactions. I know Abraham had lots of gold. God blessed him with lots of gold and stuff like that. But it never talked about him spending, you know. So gold is, is, is definitely a gift and a blessing from God and a form of riches. I think that that's signifying restoration. Hmm. Okay, so I'm looking at Zechariah, Zechariah 13. And it says, on that day, a fountain will be open for the dynasty of David. And for the people of Jerusalem, a fountain to cleanse them from all their sins and impurity. Wow. That just gave me chill. So that is resonating. Ooh, wow. Wow. So write that down because I think it, as you read it, it'll bring clarity to your dream. Um, this is Zechariah 13. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Zachariah 13. Let me see which is it 13? Yeah, 13.1. Zachariah 13. That's the beginning of it. Oh man. Oh, let's keep going. So look, look at this. So Zechariah 13 1 goes, on that day a fountain will be opened for the dynasty of David and for the people of Jerusalem, a fountain to cleanse them from all their sins and impurity. Verse 2 says, and on that day says the Lord of heavens armies, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will erase idol worship throughout the land so that even the names of the idols will be forgotten. I will remove from the land both the false prophets and the spirit of impurity that came with them. If anyone continues to prophesy, his own father and mother will tell him, you must die for you have prophesied lies in the name of the Lord. And he, and as he prophesies, his own father and mother will stab him. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this book is interesting, but that first verse does remind me of, you know, that fountain being turned on restoration and cleansing coming to, you know, that family and the sins being washed away and the impurities being washed away. So the Lord is showing you that what you're fasting for, you're tapping into. You've opened the fountain. So I would go read and read Zechariah 13. That's powerful though. Our family like aren't married and stuff. Like we and we just do okay in life, and everybody has so much potential to do more. But we are so emotionally weighed down, 
And when it said about the idols and stuff, like that makes so much sense. I was going like, to say- We all you- know Jesus, not the way we're supposed to. We were, we're Christians, but it, it, it's just, it just makes so much sense. I'm trying not to cry right now. Like as you were reading everything, like everything was resonating with what's going on with my family. If um if you Tanika, if you saying that there's a lot of women that are unmarried in your family, that that's from the witchcraft of your great grandmothers. Yeah. If you said that they use witchcraft to get men, remember mm-hmm. the sins of the parents passed down to the third and fourth generations. Yeah. So yeah. if if they were stealing other people's husbands or or you know capturing men in a way that they weren't supposed to be, you know that that comes that falls on you on the uh, the mm-hmm. later generations. Yeah. Yeah, the only the only girl in our in my generation that got married, her husband her husband is in prison right now. He lost his mind. So mm-hmm. her marriage is not the even one working who out. did get married, the her man was taken away from her. See, it's the same yes. thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. They use witchcraft to get men, now men are being taken away from. Yes. The women in the family. Mhm. As a recompense. Yeah, I've always known as a little kid there was something wrong with my family because I'm like the only person who could like see things from a like a healthy perspective. Mm-hmm. Like I've been giving advice to the adults of my family since I was like in elementary, and they would listen to me. But it, it so I I I I didn't like fit in into mentally in the, in the way as I'm trying to say mm-hmm. as in maturity. Wow. So I it like all this makes sense. I I do see why God wants me to do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jayla says she's had the same thing in her family. Um, but I mean the Bible says whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's what mm-hmm. the grandparents sowed. Now the family is reaping it because what they sowed. Um, but you've broken that and the fountain of cleansing has been opened for your family. Go ahead, Tiffany. No. Oh, sorry. That was my nail clicking the phone because I'm reading the rest of this chapter. And even verse three, where you were saying the, the father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. I mean, oh, well, I'm reading King James Version. So, so shall stab him. That mm-hmm. could, to me is your whatever the unclean spirits are in your family, they're going to be coming against you because of what you for the relaying of the foundations that you're doing, Tanika. Right. I mean, it's okay though, because obviously, um, whatever she's been believing God for, and even as she's been fasting, that fountain has been open. So now that we know that the fountain's open, Tanika. Um, this is even the more when you're in your prayer time, start decreeing over your family what you want to see. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically start washing them in that gold that's flowing out, that liquid gold. And um, and mm-hmm. also that verse three, I don't think it's talking about you, where it's saying the um and his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. This whole chapter is talking about false prophets, like the shaming, um, a fountain for cleansing. Okay, so my actual Bible says a fountain for cleansing sin, and my blue letter Bible says false prophets ashamed. So I think it's talking about any false prophets in your family, whether they be aunts or grandma, you know, the Jezebel spirit, that is the spirit that's going to be stabbed and called out. Because it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed, everyone his vision when he hath prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. Hmm. Oh, and then when you continue to verse nine, it says, I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, wow. So I definitely think that dream was from God. You, and you said you had on rags in the dream, mm-hmm. you being the repair of the breach and the spirit that has taken hold in your family. Go ahead, patience. No, it's so powerful because the rest of verse nine is so powerful. I'm going to read verse nine again from the beginning. I will bring it. I will bring that group from the fire and make them pure. So he's talking about your family. I will refine them like silver 
I will purify them like gold. And then he says, they will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. That that makes so much sense because like it's some very intelligent people in my family and they just seem so wrapped up in things that don't make sense. And I was like, this got to be for a reason. Like there, the devil shouldn't have his foot that hard on my family's neck for no reason. Mm -hmm. yeah, makes so much well. sense. This whole chapter, it's very short. You can read the whole chapter 13. It's like really short. Um, or at least all the way through verse 9. It's got to read it. It's powerful. Yeah, I, I'm, I wrote it down. I'm going to read it and pray over it. Mm -hmm. And you can declare that for your family too, what it says in here, that they will that they will call on his name and he will answer them. And then he will mm -hmm. say, these people... And then they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. And he will okay. purify them like gold. Wow. Oh, it's such a good class. <laughs> and this all started with a question at the beginning of class. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's wow. the best class. Wow. wow, this is awesome. Okay, so as we have talked about this, you know, in dealing with um, the first question we started with was the situation where somebody owed somebody money and releasing them from that debt. Um, so, Rachel, are you comfortable with how to have that conversation with her now? Do you feel like you know how to do that now to release her from the debt? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to say anything. Was that was my original plan. But now I feel like I have to say something. Because, you know, um, actually, it goes with towards the end of our sixth series, the sixth mm -hmm. series testimony we're watching. You know, it mm -hmm. talks about how these people, he saw them in hell. They had served the Lord their whole lives, and still they didn't make it. And I heard another testimony very similar to that last night. And those testimonies, they do mess me up. Like, you know, I don't want to overlook anything. So yeah. even this, I do feel like I have to say something to her now because um, yeah, as we go through the series and we get closer to that, that part, I do want more elaboration on that. Like, you know, how do we go about our repentance, our daily repentance and making sure that we're not among the deceived? Oh, do we go about the daily repentance? Yeah, I mean, I, we... I think we all practice it here in this class and we probably all do it a little differently, but how do you really ensure that you're not being deceived? Because had that not just come up in class, I was not going to say anything to her. <laughs> well, which is part of the reason why we have fellowship, right? That's why the Bible says we should not ne neglect the fellowship of the saints because, you know, I guess one mind is better than, than you know, I mean, multiple minds are better than one and a lot of times if we don't discuss things we don't even really think about it um so repenting as far as that goes for me every day just you know in my prayer time say father if there's anything in me that is in common with the devil i ask that you purify it and remove it i repent for it i renounce it and i ask you to remove it and cleanse me um so that my whole body spirit and soul may be kept blameless you know at the coming of my lord and savior jesus christ because at the end of the day we want to make sure that you know were kept blameless. And that's why I decree that scripture that my whole body, spirit, and soul may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So just asking him, if there's anything in me that's in common with the devil, remove it. Cleanse me. And the Bible says, if you ask, you know, he's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So. I mean, that's all we can do. The blood of Jesus is enough to cover everything. So the people who have served God their whole lives mm -hmm. who end up in hell, shouldn't the blood of Jesus have covered them too? Yeah, but there's usually if that happens, and you typically because there's unrepentant sin. Um, for example, you have a lot of people who, even though they profess they profess Christianity, 
and they love the Lord, there's still somebody maybe that they haven't forgiven. A lot of times it's unforgiveness, y'all. Um, because I was studying, actually yesterday, I was having this conversation with the Lord and he was reminding me of something. And the difference between mental assent and actually doing something with our hearts. And this is what he was revealing to me. He was saying, you know, there's so many people that are ending up in hell because in our mind, in your mind, you can say, well, I've forgiven this person because I've done it in my mind. But is that really this, this situation in your heart, right? That's the reason why you can still get into that, the presence of that person and still feel something in your heart, even though in your mind, you think you've forgiven them. If you haven't done something in your heart, it's not done in the spirit. That's the reason why David said this word I hide in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because he understood that when that word hits your heart, that's when it really bears fruit and shows up in the realm of the spirit. So, so many people have are in a place where of deception to where they've done something in their mind. And because they think they've done it in their mind, they think it's done. But if it's not done in their heart, and it's the same thing that we do even with faith, right? We, we profess and confess faith. But in your heart, there's unbelief. And so it's, it's, it's like it's working against each other. And it's a war in the spirit because it has to come from the heart for it to bear fruit in the spirit. That's why the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But also um, the scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if, if that forgiveness hasn't been done in your heart, you can do it in your mind all day. It doesn't matter. Same thing. If the faith is not in your heart, it can be in your, you, can, you can be confessing it in your mind all day and it doesn't matter. Because as, you, as you're thinking in your heart, that's what bears fruit in the spirit. That's what determines who you are and what's seen in the spirit. Because so many people have been, are going to, like the Lord says, are going to be deceived because they've done something in their mind or professed it with their mouth, but they haven't done it with their hearts. And that's what's going to be the determining factor as to where you go. So when we, so when I'm praying, should I, okay, so maybe I should start incorporate, asking God to align my heart and my mind with everything that is of him and like him so that I'm not deceived in either one, because sometimes your heart can deceive you too. It can. That's why I ask for clean hands and a pure heart. And that's why it's only the pure in heart that can see God, because that's what determines whether you see God is what's in your heart. So asking him for clean hands and a pure heart, um, you know, and then when you're repenting and asking if there's anything in you that's in common with the devil, ask the Lord to re remove it and ask him and ask him to cleanse you, ask him to cleanse your heart as well. Um, and making sure that, you know, your heart is pure before God, because that's what's going to matter at the end of the day. Okay. Because I do feel like Rachel, too, where I'm terrified that I'm, you know, doing all of this and I think I'm on track and then I get before God and he's like, uh, -uh step back. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually one or the other thing that the enemy gets us with, especially those who have served the Lord all their life that end up in hell. It's either the clean hands or the pure heart. It's one of the two. A lot of times it's the unforgiveness because the heart is not pure because there's still unforgiveness in it. And then even if you are and you have a good heart, then the enemy will try to get you with the clean hands, right? Get you to do stuff in your dreams that get your hands dirty. You see what I'm saying? Some type of iniquity. So he tries to get you with one or the other, either to get your heart defiled or to get your hands to be dirty and have blood on it. So if you repent and ask the Lord to give you clean hands and a pure heart and maintain that, you should be fine. Okay. Let me let that's right back in. But yeah, this was so good. Did we learn anything today? <laughs> um, the only question I still have is about from the video where the the we were talking in the very beginning about the video where the guy said in the spirit that he and I think it was Tamia who asked what it means to be upside down in the spirit, like in this when you're looking at someone with spiritual eyes. Uh -huh. He was saying that he sees people who are. That's another thing too, the old face, the people who, how does that happen? Where people, they they look young in the natural, but they have like an old face in the spirit? Yeah, he said it in the video. He said, um, it's a curse. It's kind of like when somebody puts a curse on you for you to have a spirit spouse, it's basically, he said, a witch will steal the person's appearance. They will steal like your youth. 
And once they steal your youth, they replace your youth with an old face, an old face mask. So now when you go try to date somebody, they can't, they don't see you, like they might see you in the natural, you look pretty, but in spirit, they're seeing you as an old person. So it's hard for them to really connect with you. So it's, it's, a, it's a curse that they put on you when, once they steal your, your youth. Because a lot of times witches and warlocks, because they're delving into wickedness, their youth drains. So they do have to keep trying to steal it. <laughs> from you like to look young from different people yeah and when they steal it they replace it with the old face mask and then this he said that i think he also said that um typically you tend to the person will tend to have like multiple relationships all the time because they can't keep a relationship because in the spirit realm they look old wow so when you're breaking curses off yourself do you need to break that curse specifically or what what, I mean, I, not, not unless you think it's something that you're dealing with. If you, you know, if you find yourself, you know, not able to have a relationship or keep relationships or something's been keeping you from getting married, um, a lot of spirit spouses and you're rotating relationships pretty quickly, then it could be a situation that you're dealing with. But I mean, not unless you feel like you're dealing with that. I don't think you need a big breaking stuff unless you think you're dealing with it. But he said one of the ways to know is if you're going to have like relationship turnovers. Like that's what he said. No, I didn't. No, I didn't have. No, I've never had a lot of. Whenever I've been in relationships, even in the world, the person wanted to be with me, and mm -hmm. I would always get tired of them. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> ah, yeah. So it may be a spirit spouse issue then for you. Yes, because I've yes, because I've had stuff come. Try me in my dreams. So yes, I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah, you can tell the difference. It's, it doesn't seem like that's what you're dealing with. So you should be good there. But wow, really, really good today, y'all. <laughs> y'all have me thinking about some stuff. I might have to go uh make sure I close the door too, as far as releasing people and things like that. As we never know. Is there anybody for anybody on here for the things that we talked about today? Is there anybody on your heart that the Lord has maybe put on your heart to talk to them about something, but you have not had that conversation with them? Anybody on here? And it could be maybe a coworker that the Lord's been putting on your heart to minister to you. Could be a friend or a family member that you need to have a certain conversation with about something they're into but you just haven't had it yet. Is there anybody on here that's in that situation? You mean like talking to a person or a family member about just what they're going through or? About something that let's say the Lord has already laid it on your heart to talk to them, but you haven't had the courage to do so, or you just got to put it on the back burner and forget about it. Yeah, probably my son. I would put my son up there and my daughter probably both. Okay. Well, Rachel, we know you have to talk to that lady. Um, anybody else? And we're just going to pray about it today. Dave said yes. He wrote it in the chat. So Dave, um, yes, there's somebody you need to talk to too? Okay. Okay. Were you saying something, that's right? No, just my two kids. Okay. All right. And then even with Jayla's testimony, it just, it should bring to mind too, you know, for those of you guys who, you know, there's something maybe a, a family member has been doing that you know is evil and they've been doing it in your presence and you just haven't had the heart to have a conversation with them about it. I think that should be, you know, motivation for you, you know, to think about having that conversation too. Um, because the enemy's always going to try to make it seem like the conversation is not, not going to go well. But that's not the case. If you pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to be in it when you have that conversation, it should be fine. All right. Gloria, you're good. You've been kind of quiet today. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I I have had, and um, as you were talking, I was just thanking God that I have been obedient because 
I've had so many issues with my family members and but um, and I have been praying about it and thankfully within the last um, I would say maybe a month or so I have talked to them about it because it was on my mind you know all the time and the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me just put it to the side so I had to eventually um, talk to them about it and um, you know and things are starting to get so much better and even um, in the last couple of days the Holy Spirit led on my heart to uh, give a message to my son and I kind of put it on the back burner because I felt like maybe he wouldn't listen to me or wouldn't take me serious but eventually yesterday I sent him a message and told him what the Lord had put on my heart to tell him. So all of it, you know, as we were talking and you guys were saying, um, it's been resolved. And I am so thankful that I was, you know, I was obedient in doing what I was supposed to do. So, yeah. Okay. That's good. All right, Terry says, um, she said, well, I tried to talk to a family member about how they are harsh to people and they told me to mind my business <laughs> and they were, and they are who they are. So what do you do with that? <laughs> oh, that's a good point. So what if you do talk to them and they say, and they tell you to mind your business, then what? Does it matter as long as you did your part? What do y'all think? <laughs> I think as long as you're obedient and you did your part, then it's on them, wouldn't that be? Exactly. It's up to the Holy Spirit to convict them after that. And this is the thing. Just because somebody responds like that doesn't mean that the message didn't get through. Because we have to understand people are, a lot of times, are going to go into protective mode, right? When you say something that, you know, they're, especially about their attitude or their behavior, they're gonna automatically go into that protective mode. So they may say something rude, but trust me, it's it's gonna stick because I bet you the next time they do something like that, the Holy Spirit will bring back to remembrance what you said. Well, this person said, you know, I'm rude all the time. And now when they are being rude, it's gonna, they're gonna be more conscious of it. Trust me, just because somebody act like they don't, it ain't phase them, uh uh The Holy Spirit knows, knows how to convict people. So don't be phased by how they respond, guys. Just do your part. Does that make sense? Yes, because a lot of times I don't want to talk to my son because he just goes to the left. Like my daughter's graduation party. Sit down, mom, sit down. I don't want to sit down right now. You need to sit down. And then it just went to the left. And it was just like, who? because my mind be like, who are you talking to? You so disrespectful. And then he got up and left. You know. Wow. So I always be worried about is he gonna run up in my face? Is he gonna get mad and destroy the house? Is he gonna take his car and back him to my other car? Well, just pray about it, you know, before you have the conversations and you should be fine. Um, I will. <laughs> Yep, because they, they're, I mean, kids, think about it. Anybody that you bring up something negative about their behavior typically is automatically going to go on the defensive. And depending on their personality, they might curse, they might <laughs> say something rude. It just depends on the person. It doesn't mean that what you said didn't hit them. And they're going to think about that thing later on. Because think about it. If somebody pulls you to the side and tells you, hey, you know, I think um, I've been noticing that you're projecting a certain behavior um, and a lot of people around are noticing, even though they you know, haven't taken the time to have that conversation with you. I just wanted to share that with you. Trust me, even if they respond badly when they are actually doing that same thing again the next time, it's going to come back to their mind what you said. It's going to. It's just natural. Or they're going to go home and really, really think about it. Like, wait, do I really act like that? It's going to bother them somehow, even if they don't act like it. Even if they don't act like it, and then the Holy Spirit will be able to use it 
to draw them to, you know, to be more introspective as to how they're behaving. Now, of course, if they're, you know, full of demons and they're just in sin, they may not feel any remorse at that moment, but they're still going to think about what you said. And as they get deliverance, they will feel remorse for it. And the Holy Spirit will bring it back to their mind and to their remembrance. Right? Okay. If somebody pulled you aside and told you you were behaving a certain way, wouldn't you really think about it later on? I mean, unless it was just completely off, you know, base. Yes. Yeah, most people would actually think about it. I mean, unless they were like drunk or high all the time and didn't have time to do any introspection, you, you're going to think about it. Like, wait a minute, do I really come off like that? You're going to think about it. So you're doing them a favor. Uh, what'd you say, Tiffany? I was going to say, what is, um when, because I know sometimes people get defensive. So I guess that would be what, is that a spirit of denial? Because what about the people? It's their flesh. It's just flesh. Okay. Flesh is naturally going to rise up when somebody says something that is seemingly negative um, towards you. So which is part of the reason why we have to say it in a manner that's tactful. So it doesn't sound like you're attacking them. I have done it with I have done it with someone where I've brought up someone very, very close to me, family member, where I have brought up to them something that they have that they do and that they constantly do. And and I've done it, I've learned to say it a certain way with them because they do get defensive. But every time I bring it up, they flip it and it's like, oh, well, if you think I do this, I think you do that. Okay, so that's another way of that people can be defensive too. So that's all the, in the same sphere. Some people are defensive in different ways. Some people, if they more have a more narcissistic type of personality, they're going to flip it on you. Um, some people, they're just most people are just going to go off or get mad or curse um, if they're you know not don't have the spirit of God. But at the end of the day, the point is still the point. It's going to get to them. They're going to think about it, and that's the point. Okay. Um, be ready for you should kind of know based on their personality how they're going to respond because they're going to be defensive in some way but depending on their personality be prepared for if they do try to flip it yeah like, that, yeah, it has gotten to the point where it's like I don't want to say nothing to you no more because you're just going to try to and you can't say anything about me now especially now that I'm trying to walk the, the narrow path so now you bring up stuff from like 10 years ago 15 years ago and then even when we were kids oh when we were children you and i'm like really like i don't even remember i was nine like what do you want me <laughs> you need to tell that's exactly what you need to tell them the next time you have that conversation with them you need to tell them every time i have this conversation with you about something you always flip it and let them know exactly what they have said so now they won't be able to use that anymore oh, okay pray and ask the holy spirit to reveal to you that there's anybody that you need to have a conversation with um, that you haven't had a conversation with, uh, whether it's a coworker that you need to share the gospel with, whether it's a friend or family member um, that you need to confront about something, whether it's your children. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the whole work. Okay. Does everybody understand what that is? Yes. And then wait, how do, if, if we, one last thing, if we try to have a conversation with them, mm -hmm. like uh, even children, and they don't want to hear it, or they completely shut down, mm -hmm. then how do you handle that? Because you can't have a conversation by yourself. Okay, well, as long as you've shared what you felt, because this is the thing, you've already said it, right? So let's say if you're having a conversation with them and you say, hey, hey, Tiffany, you know, I noticed that um, every time you're in this certain situation, you respond a certain way, you know, it does come off very, very rude. Um, I don't know if anybody else has said anything to you about it before, but I did want to bring it to your attention because I'm not sure if you're aware that you're doing that, right? So mm -hmm. if you say it like that, it kind of, you're asking them a question. So naturally, the, the human brain is, is naturally response would be to the question. And the question was, I'm not sure. And the last question at the end of it was, I'm not sure if you're aware that you're doing this. You want to end it with that because it opens up a question and it closes the door for a negative response because they have to answer the question first. It's just naturally your mind responds to the question. So end it with that question. Whatever okay. you're saying, end it with the question of, I'm not sure if you're aware that you're doing that. 
Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get into some sweet stuff. Let me stop. Recording.